Hey folks, uh, I'm here with the, the pig again. And so this assignment that I'm gonna detail is gonna be an extra assignment of Google Classroom. Uh, it's gonna be the fifth one. And so for people who are fully remote and also for people who are here in class, I wanted to give you kind of the full rundown of this assignment as it's kind of evolved a little bit uh, since I gave it to A Block on the beginning of Monday. So uh, what you're seeing is the pig hanging from the ceiling. Uh, and so, you know, that's my attempt at showing you where the ceiling is. Uh, and I'm just gonna show you what the people in the room did as far as measurements. So the first thing they did, they took a motion detector and they held it directly under the pig as it was at rest. And so um, this is gonna be kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll be moving the camera a couple times, so get ready for that. Uh, we start data collection and we leave it under the pig for a bit and then we move it off to the side and we leave it there. And then we move it back, and then we move it off to the side again. And that's it. So that's the first uh, video. And basically, like what I was doing with the um, the motion detector is finding the distance between the pig and the detector, and then finding the distance between the pig and the ceiling. And this is what the graph looks like. Now, here we go. So, you know, ignore the huge spikes, but basically this lower um, plateau is going to be the distance from the motion detector to the pig. This taller plateau is the distance between the motion detector and the ceiling. And because I like tried to, um, I tried to keep the um, motion detector level as I was moving it. Uh, if I find like the distance here and the distance here, and I subtract them, I will find the length of the string and the pig. Um, so the pig's basically a pendulum. If I find the length of the string plus the pig, that's the length of my pendulum. Okay, so that's the like first part of the data collection. And you'll see like a graph on uh, Google Classroom that has the data uh, already stored in it and it has some analysis to it. So now I'm gonna get the pig going. And I'm probably gonna adjust the, oh, no. okay, that's great, I don't have to. Um, so it takes a minute for the pig to to get to like a horizontal circle. Um, you know, so people who are in the room, uh, I didn't really give you big instructions, but if, the, if your data is a little bit off, it's probably just because the pig didn't get enough time to start to enter into a horizontal circle. So for the next data collection, it's really hard for me to do as a, an individual here, but I wanna, make it so that the motion detector is under the path of the pig. So I'm gonna move after I start collection. Um, and I just wanna hold it as still as possible for about the time of the data collection. Okay, good enough. And catch the pig. Okay, so this graph, <clears throat> Looks like this. Go, whoops, wrong way. Like that. Okay. Um, and so this graph has some little dips in it, and that's obviously out of focus, but that's okay. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to do two meters. Okay. So we do one and a half. So as far as this graph is concerned, um, you can kind of ignore the first part, like if this this part that has like a curve to it, that's while I was like getting settled. But for all of this, uh, this represents the periodic motion of the pig. So every dip is going to be a moment where the pig was passing over the motion detector. Every plateau is gonna be when uh, the pig is not in my view and I'm just getting a view of the ceiling. Now, um, something to pay attention to here is I can measure the times. Uh, so I can like analyze this. And uh, you can't really see that, can you? Okay, let's see. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Okay, let's go in. Cool. And so what you wanna notice is it gives you uh, the minimum value at a certain time. So 5.7 seconds is when the minimum value of 0.1773 meters appears. Uh, if I do the same thing for the next dip, 
uh, I get this, and I get the minimum of 0.1766 happens at 7.6 seconds. So each dip is when the pig passes the motion detector, and so if I find the change in time between those two, uh, I'm basically, I found the period of motion of the pig. So again, for this one, it's when the minimum happens is 5.7 seconds when the minimum happens here at 7.6 seconds. That, mat that matches like the, the x-axis that you totally can't see right now. It matches the x-axis approximately for times. Um, and so you find the difference and that's that. The other thing you can do is take your minimum values. That's the um, distance from the motion detector to the pig. And then take, I would advise, uh, I advise the people in the room taking the average or the mean value, uh, 1.102 meters, taking that value <clears throat> and subtracting this value minus one of your minimums, and that will be the distance between the pig and the ceiling. And you should find that they are different values. Um, you know, when you measure the pig not moving, you got the length of the string. If you did the subtraction between these two minimum values, you would hopefully find a value that is um, less than the length of the string. So that's all the data. You're going to see graphs that are already analyzed for the statistics. And so I'm just going to um, take you to the front of the room and show you what I showed my classes. So let's see. Okay, so here we are at the front of the room, and this is what I went through with the classes. Um, block A, sorry, I did more with Block B, so you can kind of catch up with what I've done. Uh, block G, probably did everything, I hope, here. So anyway, um, with all of the data from the graphs, you can make the following measurements. Uh, from the first graph, when the pig was at rest, you can measure the length of the string plus pig. Um, and so that's going to be the like difference between the position for the uh, plateaus on the graph. You can also get a measurement for H. I arbitrarily made it H. It's the distance between the pig and the ceiling. And this is while the pig is moving. And so like just like a pendulum, uh, the pig is like out over here. So as you move the, the pendulum to the side, the length of the string obviously remains the same and just gets pulled over. Now it's at an angle. Uh, when you do that, the pig rises up a little bit because a pendulum swings back and forth like this. This point is higher than this point. So you should have a value for H that is less than the value for L. Um, so this comes from the in motion graph. Uh, your challenge in this lab is eventually to find out the value for G. And so I'm just kind of trying to paint a picture of what you're gonna need. Now this is uniform circular motion for the pig in a horizontal circle. Um, and so L and H are actually not useful numbers. What's useful? is the radius of the pig's circle, and then the angle that the string makes with the ceiling, because that's the angle at which the tension force acts. So um, if I like take into account the value of L, the value of H, I can make a right triangle with the location of the pig and the ceiling. Um, my goal here is to find a value for R, that's the radius of the pig's circle, and also to find the angle theta. And so you wanna do trig with these two numbers, to find these other two values. You also um, can measure the time between the dips. And as I said, that's the period. So the things that you're going to eventually know are the radius of the pig circle, the angle the string makes with the ceiling, and the period of motion. Um, you can use the equation for speed in circular motion, for centripetal acceleration in circular motion, uh, and then your understanding of Newton's second law. And your goal, as it says over here, there we go, uh, is what is little g according to the pig? And so your, your way to do this lab is you're gonna treat little g as a variable that you are trying to solve for. So there's like lots of experiments, experiments that you can do to measure acceleration due to gravity or gravitational field on Earth's surface. This is one of them. So we're going to try and experimentally determine the value of little g. So we're hoping for a number that's 9.81. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not gonna be 9.81, but you're gonna get something close. What you wanna do is using what we just went through with the, the triangle, your data from the graphs, your understanding of uniform circular motion is basically set up Newton's second law 
and solve for the value of little g. Um, this is the extra assignment. It'll say this in the assignment, but what you want to submit is data from the graphs, uh, your work, and your answer. And that's it. Uh, it says starting with f equals ma, but that's fine. Um, so no like introduction. You won't probably want to give it a title in your name, obviously, but just the data that you got from the graphs in like a list, and then the work that you show and your answer, which is your value for little g. And that is the lab. Good luck.